Welcome back to the Boys Hub Live. Today, we have Delaware guard Nate Darling. <laughs> Nate, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me, boys. Of course. For sure. For I'm Evan. I'm Noah. I'm Alex. Today, we're going to talk some basketball and ask some questions. Okay, starting off. When's the first time you can remember picking up a basketball? Um, I wouldn't remember this, but there's a picture of me probably like one or two in like a Larry Bird jersey holding the, <laughs> holding the basketball. So I guess that's probably the, the first time. Sure. When do you, uh, when, how old were you when you like kind of started to realize that like you can do this for your future, play basketball? Um, around like 10 or 11, I kind of like, I didn't realize that this, like, I was good enough to do it, but I, I kind of made the choice that, um, you know, I want to stick with basketball. I, I want to do this. And I kind of like turned into this crazy work ethic at, at a young age and just like dedicated to that. But around like, I think like probably 14, 15, 16, I started to really believe like, you know, I could be like one of the best shooters, like in the world for my age group. So I have a chance to, to do something cool with this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, how have you been keeping yourself busy during quarantine? It's been tough, but uh, just, you know, working out. I got uh, my strength coach giving me some weights. Uh, I got a half court, like outdoor court by my house. So I've just been pooping at and just trying to stay in shape. And uh, I don't really like running on pavement and stuff. So, I try to do as much of different stuff conditioning wise other than just like straight up running a mile or so. But I just try to have fun with it. You know, I have my girlfriend and I live together. So, we've just been hanging out, watching movies, you know. Yeah. What you been watching? Uh, we actually just started Riverdale. I know it's kind of like old, but we just started. And I'm I'm really into it. It's kind of like just I don't know. It's, it's kind of lame, I guess, but it's <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> All right. So, how did it feel to win gold in the FIBA Under 19 World Cup with Canada? Uh, I mean, yeah, that was just a, a surreal experience for sure. Um, it was the first gold in Canada basketball's history, like any like level or whatever. So it was a big win for the whole like country. And I mean, I don't know, we weren't supposed to do it. We had guys who, who went to school instead of playing with us that were like high level guys that are in the league right now. So we were kind of like under match. We didn't have our full squad and you know, we just came to cool experience, cool feeling. We were in Egypt too. And Egypt was kind of in like a, a crisis. So the security was high. So it was just, it was all around just a, a unique life experience, and I'll never forget it. Yeah, that's super cool. Uh, how would you describe the experience of playing with big names such as Markel Fultz and R.J. Barrett? Uh, I mean, I'm like, for me, they're, those are just teammates, you know. Um, they're like my friends, guys, you know, in the basketball world, you know, we're all, we're all just guys playing against each other. But to, 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 to say I played against, you know, number one pick and number three pick, or was it R.J. number, was he number three? Or she was number three, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, I'm watching these guys and watching what they can do on the court. I mean, it's unbelievable. And, you know, it's a learning experience, too. Just soak it up. Even though RJ's younger than me, like, seeing this guy, like, at, at 17 years old, drop 36 on, on USA, who has, like, full of NBA guys, you know, it's just, like, watching that is kind of unbelievable. And, like, I mean, that's all you can say. You're playing with those guys, it's just you never know. It's, it's never a dull moment, you know. And they can go off for 30 or they can dunk on people's heads, you know. So, yeah. How yeah. are they as teammates? They're both laid back, like, joking guys, you know. They're not, like, super intense with you. But, you know, like, when it's game time, they look at you like, like, come on. Like, you know, it's serious. But, like, off the court, I mean, Markel is one of the goofiest guys I've ever met. I know Markel a lot better than I know RJ. Because uh, we went to high school for three years, but yeah, Markel was like my best friend during high school and just uh, he's a goofy character. <laughs> Me and Alex took some, <laughs> we took some pictures with them oh, at yeah. a USC game a little while yeah. back. Oh, for real? Cool. Yeah, it was a pretty nice picture. I was, I was like smiling, <laughs> going crazy at the camera, and he was looking in a completely opposite direction. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> uh, so, what made you want to transfer from from uh, UAB to Delaware? It was mainly um, at UAB. I mean, it was a good situation. Uh, I just wasn't really the number one option, and I felt um, I could be more. I knew I could be more. And to get to the NBA, for me at least, I saw if I wanted to get the NBA's attention, you know, um, 
I have to shoot more threes. And I was shooting, I think, four a game at UAB. And then and the next year I shot eight a game at Delaware and like made around 3.5 or something. So that quickly caught the attention of NBA scouts. When like I shoot 40% at eight a game, that's like automatic. Like this guy can, can shoot at, at the highest level, you know? Yeah. So some NBA scouts are questioning the competition you played in college. Mm -hmm. How would you say that playing on a mid-major program uh, compares to players that are coming out of Power 5 programs? Uh, that's a good question, man. Um, I mean, obviously, there there is a difference. Like, I mean, there's a reason kids got recruited high major, you know what I mean? But then there's, there's guys like me who I'm, I consider myself maybe a late bloomer. I, I wasn't – I was like 155, 160 coming out of high school, so I didn't – you know, I was skinny and – so I think the main thing would probably just be like size, speed, and athleticism. I think the skill level everywhere you go, like in college, is, is pretty much similar. Um, just the next level, like the higher you go, it's always bigger, stronger, faster. So um, I think those guys will be more ready for the NBA than maybe I – like that's a bad way to put it. I think I, I might have a, a little bit of an adjustment to make because of how much more athletic the NBA is compared to the mid-major level than how much more the athletic the NBA is compared to the high major level, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah and you you dropped 29 against number 20 Nova, and that I mm -hmm. think that just shows that you're completely up there with all those guys in Power 5. Yeah, I mean, that's not that's not really a worry for me. I've been playing against the best players, and, like, you know, I played with Markel, number one draft pick. Like, it's, they're all people to, to us. I know people like to say, oh, he's going up big, bad, going over, you know, but it's just another game and I had to do what I had to do. And unfortunately we didn't win, but it's just basketball at the end of the day. And I, I don't like that. People like to say, I have to prove myself at the, at, at the high major level. I understand it, but it's kind of annoying, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Playing against Villanova is as high major as it gets. Well, uh, pretty much. Yeah. So uh, moving to some NBA questions. Get. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what is your all time NBA starting five? Come on, man. <laughs> I was not ready for that. Um, I'm just going to – I'm going to do this. Like, I'm not going to do my, like, five all-time best players because I think that's played out. Everybody knows who really, like – there's, like, seven guys you can put in that conversation. So I'm going to do my top five guys that I'd just like to have on the team. I put my point guard. I'll go Steve Nash. Shooting guard. I'll take Kobe. Small forward. I'm a, I love LeBron, but I'm a, I'm a big KD guy, so I'm going to go KD. Ooh. Yeah. Power forward. Um, I'll go Dirk. I mean, Dirk. And then center. Who I like to watch? I'll go Shaq. Center. Shaq. Yeah, for sure. So let's say you were dropped into that starting lineup. Would there be any adjustments you'd make to that roster, or would you leave it the same? If I was dropped into the starting lineup, like as the two guys, yeah, yeah. Like Kobe, um, I'd probably change KD to LeBron, mm -hmm. just to have another just guy more looks. there. Yeah, exactly. Like more of a, I mean, KD obviously can move the ball, but more of a pass first guy and create for others. Because if it was just me, Steve, and KD, is kind of I don't know, but yeah, I'd put LeBron in there, I guess. Yeah. All right, so what made you decide to declare for the NBA draft while maintaining your elig or eligibility? Um, I'm, I, pretty much I'm a bubble guy. I had a, I had a great year um, that raised the attention of, of NBA scouts. Um, this is the first year that I did that, so uh, I'm not a sure shot guy to these NBA teams. So um, if I if, if coming out of high or coming out of college after this year, they're saying, yeah, Nate, you're a first rounder. I would have just declared and, you know, signed with an agent or whatever, but um, just, I'm just going through the process and, and seeing what feedback I get, you know, what I can work on. Am I ready right now? Do I have to go back to school? So that's kind of just why I wanted to keep my eligibility just in case, you know, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket right away. Yeah. It's a smart move. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, Speaking of the NBA draft, do you have, like, any preferences where you want to go, or is there a team you've always wanted to play for? No, I mean, the NBA is the NBA to me. Um, being from Canada, obviously the Raptors would be, like, 
cool, but um, I just want to play ball with it with a team that um, that fits with me. I, I've been away from home since I was 14, 15, so playing, and I live in Nova Scotia, so it's not like Toronto's right by my home. Um, so I, I play anywhere, man, as long as it's a great fit and they like me there. I'm cool with playing anywhere. So are the Raptors your favorite team all the time? Yeah, I don't. I'm not like a like. I I was I was happy that they won the championship. I don't really cheer for like a a team. I'm just like a basketball lover. I like watching like good basketball, and I appreciate all levels of basketball. You know, I'll watch the two worst teams in the NBA go at it like in the regular season. You know, that's they're still the best players in the world. And I can still learn from them. So I'm not like a fan of the NBA. I just try to like watch it and learn it because you know what I mean. I'm not like cheering for the Raptors. I guess. Well, maybe I yeah. am like at heart, but I just want to see good basketball. Yeah. Do you have a yeah, favorite team to watch? Favorite team to watch? Probably the Warriors. Wow. Well, the Warriors, like prime Warriors, you know, with KD and Steph and Clay when they're all just – just the way they move the ball and play off each other is just so fun. It's just pure basketball. Yeah, especially being a shooter like you are watching Steph and Well, exactly. Clay. I feel that's my type of game. I'd love to, to fit into something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So – uh, talking about the draft, Wesley Brown, a Canadian basketball scout, said that you're probably going to just be a shooter at the next level. So mm-hmm. what else do you think your game brings to the table? Uh, I'm definitely um, an all-around player. Um, as you can see at Delaware, I mean, I shot – I hit four threes a game, but I also, like, hit four or five regular shots a game. So I, I have a nice little mid range. Um, I'm a big creator off the ball screen. I feel like I, I know the game well. I can read the game well. Um, but but definitely my my main strength at the, at the next level will be my shooting until I I adjust and come into my own. Because um, in the NBA, you know, you have to have a skill that is that is elite to get there. So my my shooting skill is my elite skill, and I definitely have a bunch of other stuff too. But to, I'm definitely going to try to bring that up and and bring it to par so I can be an all around player in the NBA. Yeah. What do you think you need to work on the most? Um. That's a good question. Uh, definitely on the defensive end, uh, that's probably my biggest weakness. Weakness. Um, just got to get stronger, faster. I think I need to watch more film on how I can guard better and defensive positioning and stuff. Um, but, like, offensively, I think I just need to get more confident and more comfortable with my handle. I need to – I get a little loose with it sometimes. I just need to feel like it's always on a string 100% of the time. Um, I think once I get there, that will really take my game to the next step. Is there an NBA player, like, in the past or now that you've kind of modeled your game after? Um, I used to watch Steve Nash, like, a ton growing up. Um, he's been my – like, that was my guy forever being Canadian. Um, mm-hmm. So, I think I took a lot of stuff from his game. Um, I also I watch a lot of J.J. Redick growing up, too, when I was in high school. I watched him a lot because my role in high school was pretty much strictly shooter. Um, but – Watching Steve Nash and how he uses ball screens and stuff, um, he's a lot a lot more crafty than I am, but I want to be able to do the stuff that he did. And I think he's a great example of, like, you know, body type, size, and how he weight and quickness and stuff and how I could be in the NBA. Obviously not – maybe not Steve Nash's level, but I can learn from him, you know. Yeah. Have you been watching The Last Dance recently? Yeah, I got to – I'm on episode eight. I got to finish nine and ten. But I have been watching it, yeah. So having watched it so far, do you think MJ is the GOAT or someone else? Um, I don't know. That's tough. I think, like, for me, I don't think he's the greatest of all time. I think he's definitely obviously in the conversation. I, I can't pick, but, you know, MJ kind of laid the blueprint for, like, superstars today with, like, you know, like, the skill, athleticism, like even the swag, the shoe deals, all that stuff. Like he was the first guy to do all that. And then like these guys are, are learning from him and trying to do it at the next level. So I think to just outright say that he's the GOAT is kind of like not giving credit or actually like, I don't know. I think that's kind of unfair to say, but I don't think he's the flat out GOAT, but he's definitely, there's like three guys that you can, three, maybe four that just, I'd say are the goats. Like you can't, uh, you can't say one's better than the other. Yeah. Who are your goats? I'd say Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, and then KD's right there. I mean, KD's for me the best offensive player of all time, easily, like scoring wise. Um, so he's he's right there for me. 
Yeah. All right. So we have probably the most important question of the entire interview. Uh, what is your dream car? <laughs> dream car. Uh, growing up, might have been like a G wagon. Um, oh. I'm a big like SUV kind of guy. Like I like trucks. I'm not like one of those fast sports car guys. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, like a G wagon, like a, a souped up Range Rover. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a big car guy. I don't. Uh, I don't know. That's respectable. Yes, <laughs> I, I know that you must be a big car guy if, if that was your most important question. <laughs> <laughs> uh. A little less important, but still important nonetheless. What's your favorite pair of shoes to hoop in? Mm, not a good question. Um, I'd say Kobe 6s were my favorite pair of shoes to hoop in ever. Um, right now with Adidas, I've been playing in the new Hardens, which I really like. Like I have an all-white pair and an all-blue pair, and I pretty much for the second half of the season, once we got them, I, I only wore those. So those are probably my favorite shoes like as of right now. If you got a shoe deal with an NBA team, or if you got a shoe deal when you go to the league, would you choose Adidas, Nike? Who would you choose? Hey, man, I can't say that right now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I might get a couple of shoe deals down the line. So I don't know. I don't want to this come out three years later and be like, Nate preferred Nike over Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have to pass on that one. Okay. What? How would you design to kind of go away from the brand, how would you design the shoe if you could? Um, definitely like low mid guy. So I do like a, I probably try to follow like the coat. I'm a big growing up. I wore Kobe's pretty much every year they drop. So cause he always went with the low cut until he obviously tore his Achilles. Then he went, then when he went high, and that's kind of when I stopped. So maybe I try to do similar something style that Kobe had. Yeah. And I'm colorful. I like, I like. A lot of colors and stuff, so I'd soup it up a little. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So I think that about wraps it up. Nate, thank you for being on the show. Uh, good luck no training for the NBA draft. Hopefully we see you in an NBA uniform sometime next year. Yeah, that's man, great. that's the goal. I appreciate you guys having me on, and, you know, good luck in the future, and you guys are great kids. So, yeah, all the best, man. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming on. No problem, boys. All right, you guys have a good one. Thank you, you too. You too. Uh.